In today's show, we're going to get cascading dropdowns for power apps. This is one of those little necessary evils, right? It makes your user's life a lot easier by making these cascading menus, but it's going to take a little work for you to set it up the first time. But that's what I'm here to help you do. So let's just take a look at it. But first, here's our intro. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras. Those guys. Today's show is all about the cascading menu, right? That's where you select one option in the dropdown and then the other dropdown gets filtered by it. So you have the ability to only choose titles that kind of correspond with the other one. So we're gonna make a very simple app that's just gonna pull some of that data out of an Excel workbook to show you the mechanics of it. And I know this video has been covered on other channels, right? I've seen some videos, I watched a couple of myself, read some blog posts, but they all kind of, didn't jive turkey for me, right? They, they either phoned it in or they didn't explain what they were doing well enough. So I wanted to make a video that showed you all the mechanics and kind of helped you understand it. So that, that way when you go to apply it to your data that's not exactly the same as the data that's in the demo, you can kind of work through it. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, so let's switch over here to my desktop. And real quick, I'll show you what we're gonna build. So here you can see I named it Cascading Dropdowns. Very fancy name, I know, I'm good. And so then here under Departments, I've got choices, so accounting, executive, HR, IT, and so we choose executive. Now then this control lights up and we have job title you can choose from. If we go up here and change the department from executive to IT, pretty cool. Now we've got some different options. So that's what we're gonna build. Um, I threw a couple of reset buttons down here. We'll talk about those because I wanna show you how to use those to make your life easier as you do build out your drop downs and you're just trying to figure out how this works those two buttons down there made my life a lot easier, so I thought I'd include them in the video as well. All right, so if we switch over here to our Power Apps, right, we'll sign in real quick. All right, so after a couple seconds, that loaded up, and so then we'll click on Apps, and we will create an app. Okay, and then for this example, we're just going to use a blank app, right, because I'm not really worried about building something out of data. This is just to show you the mechanics of the cascading menus. You can then go apply it to your other apps. I don't want to put it in a very specific context. So I'm just gonna choose a blank app, and I'm gonna choose phone layout. A couple seconds there, and it's all taken care of. We'll skip the tutorial. And so here we have a nice blank app. Okay, and so our goal is to build this guy, right? So cascading dropdown. So what are we gonna do? First thing we'll do is we'll insert ourselves a label. And for the label, we'll call it cascading dropdowns, right? This is exactly what you hope to learn in this video. There you go. And so then, you know, I took it and I did a little uh, home, make it bold make it some 36 font, yay, okay. So that is pretty straightforward, I hope. And so now what we wanna do is we're gonna insert a, uh, another label. And so for this label, we'll pull it down a little bit. And this label, we're gonna call it department. And then under there, we need a drop down. So we're gonna say controls and drop down, and we'll slide this under here. All right. So. Right, that gets us going. Then we'll do another label. Boom, like this. And for this, we'll call it job titles. And then insert another drop down. Hey, we're all done. No, all right. So there you go, boring part over. So now that we've got the two pieces in place, let's do a data connection to get to that. And so for my data connection, I'm gonna pull from an Excel workbook. And actually, let me go over here and grab you the Excel workbook, one sec. And we're gonna take a look at demo cascading real quick. So here in Excel, you can see that we've got a department column, and so that is the various departments I have here. And then the job title associated with each one. And so you're gonna have, uh, you might have overlaps, that type of stuff, but essentially each one of these is unique between its department component and its job title. Also, pro tip went ahead and added a blank line up here because one of the things we wanna make sure we do is we have it set up so that it's a, um, a blank choice when they get to the page instead of just showing them the first thing in the list because we don't want them to you know, just choose that thing because it was already populated. So we're gonna have a blank line also. Easy enough? All right, so that's our spreadsheet. So if we go back over here and we go to view and data sources, we're gonna say add a data source. And we know that our Excel workbook is saved in OneDrive, so I'm gonna choose OneDrive for business. If you haven't um, configured it the first time, you'd add a new connection and choose OneDrive. And then you could also be pulling this data out of a SharePoint list or a Google Doc or anywhere else, you know? So don't feel like you have to use Excel. 
I just thought this was the easiest for the example. So we'll choose OneDrive for Business. We'll choose Demo Cascading XSLX. And then we'll choose my table name job titles. Remember your Excel workbook, in order to be used inside of Power Apps, you have to be pulling from a table. So you have to create named tables inside those workbooks. All right, so that's there. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go here to Departments. And let's see, that's drop down one. We'll call this uh, drop down uh, departments, right? It's always good to name these things so you know what they are later. So drop down department. And so items right now is coming on the drop down sample. We don't want that. What we want to get items from is we want to pull values from our Excel workbook. And so for that, we know that we named it uh, job titles. Now, job titles would return all the data, all the records, but we just want to pull the one column. So instead of just doing straight up job titles like that, which wouldn't work anyway, we're going to do distinct. And then for this, we're going to say we want to pull distinct job titles. And then we're going to do a comma, and we want to pull the distinct department value. Okay? So if we hit preview here, and we do the drop down now, we'll see we see IT, accounting, HR, and executive in our blank field, which is what we wanted uh, to have there. So that's kind of the first step of getting this stuff in there. Now, I will tell you, though, that I don't know if you're like me, but it really bothered me that this stuff wasn't in alphabetical order. And I didn't want to go over and fix it in my Excel workbook. So what I did here was once I got that data, I went out here. And then I did a sort. And so we're going to sort that. Uh, what we just did by the result. So boom, just like that. And now if we hit play, ah, uh, they're in alphabetical order. It's the little things in life, right? But getting those in alphabetical order was a big deal to me. So we've got that done. Okay, so that gets the first drop down done. So then the job titles drop down. We're going to do something very similar, but this one's going to be a little more complicated because we need to take it off of the previous data. Okay, and so for this one, we want to do is we're going to we're going to work in to out to kind of build up what we need. But the first thing I want to do is I want to filter that data. And so what data do I want to filter? I want to filter job titles. And I want to filter job titles where department. I should have clicked it the first time. Department equals what? We want to do it to our drop down dot department or drop down underscore department dot selected and then this is the thing I kept messing up in the beginning dot value so if we do that that's going to filter out the list and get us just the one the things for department if we hit play here so now if we choose accounting we get just accounting so that's not exactly what we wanted right there's three job titles for accounting but it's showing us the department field it's hard to select if you can't see what you want okay so we got the first part done. So we're at least we're filtering the list. That's good. So then now what I did is I'm going to go back out here. And I'm going to do distinct. And so for distinct, I'm going to use that source, just the one we just had, right? We know that's getting the right data back. But here what we're going to do is we want the distinct job title like that. And now if we hit play, if we choose accounting, we see manager, supervisor, and assistant. If we choose IT, we see manager, supervisor, assistant, programmer, architect, admin. And if we were, to, I won't do it, but if we flip back over to the Excel, this is exactly what we expect to see. IT has six different fields, and those are the six we're seeing. So we have gotten cascading dropdowns. Now, if you've watched other cascading dropdown videos, what you'll see a lot of times is they do, and uh, do the filter, they do an in. And what they end up doing is they end up making this like manager IT and manager HR so then they can filter or where the department name is in the job title. But I didn't think that was real world. I didn't think that was practical. So that's why I came up with this idea of filtering the data by the right thing and then choosing a distinct, right? Because you won't have more than one job title, hopefully. If you do, that's really weird if you have the same job title in one department. Um, Maybe you do, maybe you need a better solution, but this is what's been working for me. All right, so as part of this though, let's co do a couple other things. So one of the things that we, I wanted to be able to do is when I was testing, I wanted to be able to reset it, right? Because that's kind of 
struggling with my data early, making sure it worked out. So remember, it's real easy for you to create a, a button here. So insert a button. And so here, I just throw it down here on the page. And this is not something you would do in your app. This is something you would do when you were troubleshooting or learning. And that's what I was struggling through earlier today. But so then your reset button, what all I did here was I said on uh, press of that, right? So we said reset, and then we reset drop down department, like that. And then we did reset again, and then drop down two because I was too lazy to name that apparently. So now if we hit play and we're over here, we can hit reset. And that brings us back to that default thing, right? All of my forms that I ever make for users to fill out always have a reset button. Um, so you might have this for resetting your whole form, but I think it's more important that when you were testing and you wanted to understand the different things where you're pulling and trying to aggregate stuff, you want to kind of re be able to put the form back to default, the reset button was very helpful for me. Another thing that I needed during testing, which hopefully you will not, but I ended up putting myself a refresh. So insert a reload button, right here, icon, um, and so on select for this one, what I did was I said refresh job titles because I kept changing what was in the Excel workbook and I wanted to have that reload. So I'd come in here, I go to Excel, I'd make my changes, I'd hit save, and then I would hit this button and then I'd get the new data, I'd hit reset and everything would be updated. So once again, these were two tools that probably not part of your normal solution, but they helped me work through the issues, All right? And so for a bonus thing, I want to show you for just a second, let's look at, um, let's disable the job title selector, right? I don't want people choosing, nothing's going to happen if they try and choose uh, a job title before they choose a department. So I want to disable that control until they do. And so in order to do that, we're going to go in here and we're going to look at the property for this control. And one of the properties is display mode. And so by default, the display mode is edit, right? Let people mess with it. So we could, you know, if you set a disabled display mode disabled, it would always be disabled. Well, that doesn't work. So if we know we have two different values, we want to toggle between, what are we going to do? We're going to use our friend if. And so my logical test, what do we want to test? Well, we're going to say if, uh, how about we do this? We'll do drop down department dot selected dot value equals nothing, right? So they haven't selected anything, basically. Then we will set the display mode of this form to be, oh, I messed up, display mode dot disabled. And if they haven't, so if, they, if the, there is a value in there, then we'll set display mode equals edit. We'll close this out. Oh man, look at that, nice little solution. So now, when we're in here, I can't mess with job titles. I choose accounting, and then there's my job titles. And if I need to, I can use the refresh button, right? This will reload from Excel, get new job titles if I'm messing around. And then I can do reset to make sure we're back at square one. Everything's reset, IT, there's all my job titles. Pretty cool, huh? All right. Well, hopefully this quick little video helped you guys out. You know, I've struggled with cascading menus myself for a little bit. It took me a couple hours to piece it together. So hopefully this, you know, 15 minute video or so is all you guys need to get through the problem. As always, if you need anything, you know where to reach out to me, right? You can hit me in the comments below. You can uh, reach out to me on Twitter. A lot of people have been contacting me through Bold Zebras lately. Uh, Power Apps really seems to be kind of catching on with people. It's pretty exciting stuff. So you guys keep learning about it. Keep asking me questions. This video came from a viewer's question. So awesome. Great. Well, thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. Just a reminder, if you don't mind, click the old subscribe button over here. That always helps me out. Or if you want to work together, you can always hit me up through the Bold Zebras. Or if really what you want is some more of these Power App videos, which is probably what you want, then the playlist is somewhere on the screen here. All right, thanks. Have a great day.